Not to heckle too loudly, please. Patrick Harvey, to open for the Green Party. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, in a week when we've heard that even a Conservative leadership candidate thinks that it's those who've been banging the no Indy Ref 2 drum who sound obsessed with independence, uh, I, I have to say that I think Willie Rennie might even do well uh, to listen to the, the, the sage words of wisdom from Michelle Ballantyne. Um, I am delighted, I am delighted to be here to be able to join with others, not in asserting, not in asserting, but in reasserting, yes, the existing mandate for putting the future of Scotland back into the hands of the people who matter, the people who should make the decision, the people who live here. And I really think that the Conservative position of saying that the sovereign right of the people of Scotland was exercised in 2014 is such a partial position. It's as though they can only see 2014 and they cannot see the subsequent exercise of the right of the people of Scotland to say something about their future in the European referendum in 2016, where they said very clearly that they wanted to remain. In the pro-independence result of the, the majority of people that they sent to the Scottish Parliament in 2016, and in the pro-independence majorities of the candidates they elected in 2017, in 2019, three out of six in the, the European election as well in 2019, and even those who defend first past the post, who claim that 43% for a UK government is a mandate to do whatever the hell they like yeah. to the people of the UK and Scotland, refuse to accept that a pro-independence majority of MPs is a mandate in Scotland. Jackson Carlos says that those who support independence are stuck in the past. I would suggest that it's the Empire 2.0 fans in the Brexit extremist faction which has taken over his party who are stuck in the past. And the, the reality is for the Conservatives now that though once upon a time the Scottish Conservatives used to pretend to be the moderates within the Conservatives in these islands, there are no Tory moderates anymore. They have all thrown their lot in with the Brexit extremists uh, and with the Boris Johnson regime. Everything that government does is now on them. There are no more Tory moderates. As for the, the Labour position, and I, uh, I certainly would, would say to, to, uh, to Richard Leonard, yes, the Scottish Green Party is proudly pro-independence and not nationalist, because we understand the two are not the same thing. And I hope he would respect the fact, I hope the fact, he would respect the fact that as someone who supports membership of the UK, I would never call him a British nationalist. These points of language matter. Nationalism is not the only factor that can lead someone to express a view about sovereignty and about our future. And do the Greens ever argue against the odds? He says we're, we're being asked to support something we know isn't going to happen. Do the Greens ever argue against the odds? Yes, of course we do. Maybe last month when Richard Leonard was arguing for a UK Labour government, he knew that wasn't about to happen either in his heart of hearts. So yes, we have to assert sometimes against the odds. As for his argument on home rule, I still have to ask myself, what is it? What is it? And how, even if they can put forward a solid, well-defined, fleshed-out proposition for what home rule means, how does it escape the same problem that not only independence, but everything from powers over drug laws to a Scottish visa system encounters? That same problem, UK says no. And UK will keep saying no until the people of Scotland are given the ability to assert their sovereign right. And as for the Liberal Democrat position, the motion there does say that the domestic agenda matters. And yes, of course, the domestic agenda matters. That applies to all of us, whichever side of the independence debate we're on. And the Greens regularly challenge the Scottish Government on their support for the oil and gas industry, on their education policies, on their support for aviation growth, and on other issues. But none of that should prevent Scotland from also debating its future beyond those currently devolved powers. And even just picking one example from the Liberal Democrat Amendment, fuel poverty. We know that fuel poverty is determined, yes, by energy efficiency and by things that the housing minister can do to reduce energy consumption, but also by energy prices and incomes. And it's the approach of the UK government, including those Conservatives that Lib Willie Rennie's party put into power in the first place, which have had such a deleterious effect.
presiding officer, there is, we know, objective harm coming from Brexit. Economic harm, social harm and environmental harm. And Greens will oppose that because of the political position that we've taken through that. But there is also, I'll take one brief intervention if it's, if it's time. It's my view that all powers should be devolved unless there's an overwhelming reason not to devolve those powers. And I think there are some powers where there is an overwhelming reason not to. With accepting that all powers should be coming to Scotland, does he accept that that is accepting that harm will occur from that also? Patrick Harvey. Well, if, if, if Neil Finlay's party had taken that position during the Smith Commission, there is a whole swathe of powers on employment law, uh, on the rights that we have in the workplace, which, which Mr Finlay's party should have recognised. There was no reason to keep reserved to the UK level. Look, the, aside from the, the objective harm that is coming from Brexit, there is a point of principle involved here. Scotland, though I disagreed with the result in 2014, Scotland over recent years has voted in favour of both unions. And it is now being told that it cannot have what it voted for. There is a democratic choice being made today in the European Parliament as to whether to support that EU withdrawal agreement. A democratic choice has been made by a UK Parliament that wasn't elected with a majority from Scotland. And it's only the people of Scotland whose voices are being ignored or overruled. Not only the voters of Scotland, but also Scotland's Parliament, because that EU withdrawal agreement required and failed to be given legislative consent by this Parliament. Sc Scotland is not being given the respect for that claim of right, that sovereignty of the people who live in Scotland. That is not being respected by the UK Government. And the only way to change that is for Scotland, the people who live here, to be given the right to make that decision for themselves again. Greens on Friday will be relaunching with campaign events in Glasgow and Edinburgh, the Green Yes campaign. We are ready to go out and fight that campaign and we look forward. Even if the UK government does continue saying no, we'll look forward to continuing to say Scotland demands.